When we need to get milk, it's not really a question of are we going to get it. We simply go out, go to the shop, get the milk, come home, and we've got milk. This is a basic principle of goal setting and goal achievement. Yet, so many times, we don't achieve the goals that we set out to achieve. And why is that? Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to an On the Couch episode of the Shared.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home. Feeling safe, valued, and heard gives you a foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. Achieving goals. When we have to go and get milk, we just go and get it. It's not a question of can we get it. We need milk at our home. Maybe we need it for our children. Um, but we go, we realize we don't have any in the fridge. We go to the shop, we buy it, we come back, and we do that. And we've got and we've achieved our goal. And so often we set goals for ourselves and we don't achieve them. Yet this process of goal achievement is pretty straightforward. I mean, you're doing it all the time. When you have a necessity that you need at home, you know that you need it, so you've got an outcome. You go and get it, so you go to the shop. You order it online, whatever you do, to get it, and then you have it. It's a simple process. Yet in other areas, we don't do that. So why, why is that? Why don't we do that? Um, when we look at what the goals are, and think about it from the perspective of you know, there are three things. You've got an objective you want to achieve. In this case, you want to get milk. You've got a plan. You drive to the shop and you pay. And you have a way of confirming that you've achieved your goal. You've got milk in the fridge. And so it's not, again, not a difficult process. And I think about that from the perspective of you know, things that I've done in my life. I remember when I was younger, I was about 24, 20, I think I was about 24. Um, I'd been, I was finished my time in the army. I'd, uh, actually, was probably about 22, 23, 22. Anyway, somewhere around that age. <laughs> I'd finished my time in the army. I'd fluffed around for a little bit. I was living in Perth at the time. I actually went down and lived down in Albany for a little bit, fluffed around a little bit down there, then came back to Perth and was looking at um, what do I do next. I didn't really have any great objective as to what I wanted career-wise. Um, I needed to earn money uh, to live. So what do I do for money? And you know, I, I'd... I knew how to cook. I'd worked as a chef before, but I didn't really want to do that. So that was kind of clear from my end that I, that I wanted something else. And I like a lot of money too, because it gives you know, a whole bunch of freedom. You can do many different things. And I was talking with a friend about that. And, and, and they, um, she said to me, she said, well, you know, there's people that work up in the mine sites. So I was in Perth in Northwestern Australia. There's a number of different mines. They earn a, a lot of money. Um, maybe you could work there. I thought, well, that's a pretty good idea. And, you know, I have a, a trade background, so I, I'm pretty good with my hands. It kind of fit. Um, I was young. I said, I'm pretty, it would have been about 22. Um, if Yeah, tw 22. And because I got out of the army when I was, just before I was two, yeah. Anyway, let's <laughs> not quibble on that. Let's say 22. And uh, so I was, I was, you know, I was young. I was, I was happy to, to do that kind of work. I, I wasn't, um, you know, I, I didn't at that time, well, I wasn't highly educated. Uh, so I knew that, you know, and I 
So I decided, well, I, I would, would pursue that. So what I did was, okay, I made that decision. I'm going to work in the, the mind side. So that was my goal. That was my objective. And I was going to do it. There was no question of, can I do it? Um, it was like, that's what I am going to do. Uh, similar to going and getting milk. It was like, I'm going to go to the shop and get milk. I'm going to get a job working in the mine sites. So how did I do that? Well, I looked up all the, the major contractors that worked up there and, and Leighton's, McMahon's uh, were two of the companies that I remember. I think John Holland might have been another one. Um, and I found out you know, who were the recruitment people for those companies and they had offices in Perth. So I found out what those offices were, who the recruitment people was. How did I do that? Well, I called the office and said, who's your recruitment? Who's the senior management recruitment? And um, what's the address to send them a, a job application? So I asked the secretary that. And I just, just rang up and said that exact same thing. You know, who, who's, your, who's the head? I'd like to apply for a job uh, working for the company in the mine sites. Who's the, um, the recruitment person I should send the application to? And they gave me the details and gave me the address. And that was back uh, before emails. So this was old school writing a letter. And what I did was I wrote out a letter of, um, of application. This said, it was, I, I don't even remember exactly what was in it. It was a one page. It was handwritten. It wasn't a lot um, saying, you know, my background, I've worked in the army. Um, I've done some other things. I can't remember what I wrote. Uh, these are the things that I'm passionate about and I'd like to work for you guys uh, in the mine sites. Something along those lines. I wrote that out, popped it in the post and sent it off to the various, I think there was five or six people that I sent it to. And then, so I sent that off. The next day, I wrote out pretty much the same letter <laughs> and said, uh, this is my background. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm looking for a job in the mines. Uh, can I come in for an interview? And I popped that in the post and sent that off. I did that for two weeks. I, I wrote out a letter every day for two weeks, sent it off every day. And I didn't have a plan for two weeks. I was going to keep writing a letter until I got a job. Uh, and within two weeks, it was I got a phone call from, from Leighton. It happened to be at the time. Uh, saying, you seem pretty keen, would you like to come in for an interview? Which, you know, I came in for an interview, uh, explain, you know, talked about, did a standard interview, this is who I am, uh, this is what I do, this is why I want to do it, um, partly for the money, but, you know, want to expand my career, it sounds like an exciting opportunity, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's, and if you go to my YouTube channel, you find some advice in one of the the programs I've got there for free uh, as to how to, to market yourself for a, a new job, how to go through that interview process. So, so log on to that to, to find out those techniques. And they gave me a job. And then I was flying backwards and forwards. So jump in and my, the initial flight to the mine was like, that was an interesting experience. I've been on many planes before. And but I've never sat in the co-pilot seat. And we get in this plane, it's this dinky little, I think it was a 12-seater plane. Um, and everyone had got in and filled the seats. I was the last person to get on the plane. And there was only the co-pilot seat left. I'm like, well, where do I sit? And the pilot said, you sit there. <laughs> so I sat in the co-pilot seat, uh, which is a fun experience. Um, taking off, you know, was, was one thing. It was like, yeah, I'm looking out the window, we're taking off, and it's great, and we're flying along. I'm looking out the front. This is so cool. I've never done this in a plane before. Um, then coming to land was a little bit different because it's like, oh, my God, this is, you know, you can see right up front, and the plane's, you know, moving around in the wind as it's coming in. You don't see it to that degree when you're in a jumbo um, landing uh, at an airport. You, you're looking at the side, and you don't see how much this thing is moving around. So that was a, a really interesting experience. But the point was, I, I got the job and I continued to work there. And um, while I was there, what I wanted to do is I wanted to expand my knowledge. And you know, I went up as a laborer. So, you know, digging with a shovel and building things and, and just running around doing that kind of thing. All laboring stuff, um, which it, you know, I didn't mind doing. I had fun, made the most of it. But there was all these other equipment to use. There was excavators, there was front end loaders, 
the big mine dump trucks, um, the drilling machine, um, working on the explosive because they drilled lots of holes in the ground, put explosive in and blew it up. It's kind of fun. And I wanted to learn how to do that. And so I went to the, again, my goal, what do I want? I want milk. And I want to learn how to drive the front end loader. And that's what I went to the manager and said, I want to learn how to drive the front end loader. Can, can I learn how to do that? And they said, sure. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, I'm happy to come in. Um, you know, I can do my shift in my work. And then I'm, I'm happy to come in after and do a couple of hours learning how to do it with the, the operators because I had a night shift as well. And I said, yeah, no problem. So I did that. Uh, so I'd finish my shift, go and have dinner, um, come back and do a couple of hours with the, um, with the you know, learning how to drive the loader. So I was, you know, driving along and, you know, they showed me how to operate this, how to move the buckets, how to get a fill a bucket properly. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit in it, uh, as to how to, to do that well. Uh, so I did that and similar with the dump trucks. So how do we, how do we drive these big dump trucks? What are the, all the safety things that we need to know? Um, especially going down um, into the mine site, it can be quite dangerous because you're going down a steep road. Uh, all the safety requirements, how to how to drive an excavator, which they found a lot of people um, have difficulty doing that because you're sitting in an excavator and you've got the two controls and you've got your feet that control things as well. And just spinning around because you, you're spinning around the circle, some people get disorientated and, and not able to do that. I, I didn't do that but, and I learned how to, you know, use an excavator because that was my goal. I said, I want, you know, coming back to that, I want milk. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn how to operate these machines. That was my choice. That was my outcome. I then asked the question, can I do that? <clears throat> and they said, yeah. Um, you know, the, and, I, and I put forward a solution as to how to do that in a way that worked for them as well. I still had my job to do, and I was going to do this on my own time outside of that. It wasn't paid. Um, but what it did do is I got the skill, and then I got paid to do that. So there was times where you know, I went as a laborer, then they needed someone from the dump truck crew went. Um, they're on a higher salary, and I knew how to drive the dump truck because I'd done it uh, through that. And then all of a sudden I'm getting paid more. Um, to drive a dump truck rather than digging with a shovel, I'm sitting in an air-conditioned cab driving around. Um, so that was, you know, one of those steps that it took. And there's multiple times throughout my life where I did that. When I was in the army um, and I worked, because of the way we worked long hours, so we actually worked um, a seven-day fortnight. So it wasn't an eight-hour day. I think it was 12 to 14 hours was a day. It was a long day. And what we did... Um, because of that, so we, we had a lot of time off as well to make up for that difference. And what I wanted to do was, you know, I wanted to gain some knowledge. And for some reason, I can't remember why I wanted to, but I wanted, thought I wanted to, well, I did want to learn marketing skills. And so that was my goal. It's like, okay, again, coming, I want milk. I, I was going to learn marketing. That was, there was no question about that. And so I approached um, the marketing firms. I was in Perth at the time. I approached the different marketing firms in Perth and said, I want to learn marketing. Can I come in um, as a, well, I think it's called an intern in, in America, but, you know, as an apprentice or as, as someone didn't know the term intern back then, um, can I come in and, and can I learn marketing? And a number of, you know, a number of companies didn't respond or, or said no, appreciate your offer, thank you. But one, one company said yes. I said, yeah, all right. Um, I'm interested. Well, I actually didn't say yes. It said, um, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in your question. I haven't had that question before. And can you, you want to come and talk about it? So I come in and I talked about it. So look, I, I'm really excited by marketing. It's something that fascinates me. I want to learn how to do it. Um, and I'm happy to come in, you know, my days off. I'm, I'm in the army. I'm happy to come in on my days off and learn how to do marketing. Um, you know, what is the skill? What it, and, and so, he's, yeah, cool. So he took me on. And um, so I worked with him and I directed commercials. Um, I wrote copy for ads. Um, and, you know, so I'd write the copy and then I'd give it to, to the manager um, or the owner of the company, actually. And he'd go through it and we'd sit through and go, okay, this part works, this part doesn't work. This is how. And, and so I learned how to do that. Um, but it was the goal that I wanted to do it. 
I wasn't going to be not like getting milk. I was not going to not get milk. I was always going to forget that when I said it. I was like, that's what I want. So why why did that work? What what made that difference? Um, and it's probably come through in in what I've been saying there is that I made a decision. I decided this is what I'm going to do, and I wasn't going to be. Um, I wasn't going to accept no for an answer, similar to like if you need milk for your house, you go to the store. If your car breaks down on the way to getting milk, you don't throw your hands up in the air and go, oh, well, we'll never have milk again. Um, you find a way around it. You might walk to the shop, you might take a bike, you might get your car fixed. Uh, whatever it is, you'll overcome that to get milk, to get the outcome that you set. And that's what making a decision is. I mean, a decision, the word decision, um, comes from a Latin word, which means to cut off from. It means to cut off from. So when you make a decision, you've cut off from all other options. So if you've truly made a decision, you've said, okay, I'm going to do this, and there's no other option. And that was the case. Like When I wanted to work in the, the mine sites, there was no other option. I was going to work in the mine sites. When I wanted to learn the plant and equipment, how to operate those, there was no other option. I was going to do that. And I was going to find a way of doing that. And that's what making a decision is. So a lot of the times when if you set a, a goal for yourself um, and you're not achieving it, chances are that you haven't actually cut off. You haven't made that the only option available. You've given yourself other fallback. And this is comes back to... There was a study that was done uh, where they wanted to find out what was the criteria that highly successful people all had in common. Was or was there a criteria that highly successful people have in common? And they, they included in that study with people like Steven Spielberg, you know, th those kind of pe people that you know had achieved at the really the best of of what it was in those particular fields. And they went through something that was, I think it was about 280 different variables to try and work out, was there a commonality? Were any of these common across this, this massive study? And, and there wasn't any. Until they, they, asked the, they asked a question to find out um, what was the parenting like. And what they found was that all of them had in common um, and it was usually the parent of the opposite sex. Not always, but more often than not, the parent of the opposite sex. If it was a male, it was a mum. If it was a female, it was the dad. Um, and that parent had an unquestioning belief in the child's ability. So what that would mean, from a young age. So, so what that would mean is, you know, just say the child's two or three and says, oh, I want to be an astronaut. And the parent would be would say, you'll be the best astronaut ever. You, you'll you will knock this out of the park. You'll be amazing at being an astronaut. Now, the question that the part that's for this that made that work and why this is so valuable when teaching young children, when you have young children, is that it's not about whether the child will be an astronaut or not. What it is, is the parent's belief in the child's ability to achieve what they set their mind to. Um, so it's not about, you know, oh, well, you need to have a fallback plan. And, of course, <laughs> things change and you do things differently. That's a fallback plan. Um, so people say, oh, no, you, you need to have a fallback plan. It's like, well, do you? If you really believe that you're going to achieve this, you can do that. And you can, as part of your plan, have options to support yourself while you're working towards a goal. So and this is where that's the difference between those people that really, really excel um, is that they have this belief that they can do it. And that stems, I mean, you don't, that, well, that's for those people that stem from when they were younger uh, and they were taught that, but you don't have to, you can teach yourself that as a, an older person. I, I did. Um, I taught myself that, you know, um, there, there were times where I doubted myself and I wasn't you know, sure I could do things and I would give up on things and, and not achieve goals. And, you know, from that I've learned that uh, if I set myself a goal, I'm going to achieve it. 
Um, so I wasn't consciously aware I was doing that, but I, I, I did it. I, I achieved things that I set, you know, really weird things um, or were out there, big goals without really thinking about it as a goal when I was a child. Then, you know, then I went through a period where I, I didn't believe in myself and I, I, um, I gave up on things because I wasn't aware of that process of thinking. Um, and then I retaught myself um, and taught myself better that you know, it's about this cutoff, that you make a decision and that you're going to achieve it no matter what. There's no other decision. There's no other option. So that's, that's where that confidence comes in is that you, when you're getting milk, you know you can do it. You've done it heaps of times. And so you don't really think about it. You actually achieve that because you feel confident about it. It's something that you believe is within you. It's something that is is who you are, and that's a, a key distinction because you know getting milk is part of who you are. Many times we'll set a goal for ourselves, and it's outside of who we think we are, and that becomes it, it, that's where I'm going to say the word problem, but I don't want to use the word problem. That's where we find ourselves with our internal thermostat pulling us back. So we've got a goal. Um, you know, we, we understand who we are and, and what we're capable of. And we set a goal that's outside of our, our ability or at that present time. And from there, that's when we allow doubt to kick in. I'm going to say we allow because I don't think it, it, it has to be that way. It's certainly not that way from my perspective now. I Doubt is not something. Whatever it is I set my mind to, I will achieve. It's not a question. Um, it's just it, it will be done. And because I choose not to doubt my ability, I know I can do it, regardless of how many times it might take, but I'll get there eventually because that's my choice. And confidence is a choice. Confidence is not something you have. You don't go to a shop and buy confidence. Um, it's, it's, and this is, it's an interesting thing because people go, oh, how do I learn confidence? It's, you, you can't learn it. You cannot learn confidence. You can be confident. You can act confidently. You can think confidently. You can believe in yourself. You don't learn um, or you, know, you don't have. It's not a thing. It's, it's a verb. It's something you do. You behave in a confident manner. You don't know that you're going to, um, this time you're going to do exactly the right thing to get what you want. You just know that you're going to keep, you choose that you're going to keep stepping forward to achieve what you want. And that's, that's what really confidence is. So, and that's where, you know, from that perspective, if you're, if you set a goal and, you know, it's outside of your awareness or outside of who you believe you are, then chances are, if you, if you don't shift your belief that you are that kind of person, then you will give up. If you don't think you're capable of getting milk, you're not going to go to the shop and get milk. And that's where that confidence is really important to step for you to choose to be confident and for you to see yourself as the person achieving that goal, as already being that person, There's a, whatever that goal might be. If it's outside of where you currently are. You need to start visualizing yourself as the person that achieves that. And that, I mean, um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, in that book, he talks about that. You need to visualize yourself as already having achieved the goal because that moves you beyond that. That's where you get this motivation to get milk. You already see yourself as a person that gets milk. That's who you believe you are. You are capable of getting milk. When you choose to believe that you're capable of achieving the goal that you want to achieve, it's not an arduous task. It's not difficult. It's not something you have to work hard at. You have to take effort. You have to learn something new, but it's not doesn't have to be an arduous process. Uh, so that's where it's really important when we're talking about, you know, are you going to achieve your goal? Are you going to get milk? Well, you get milk all the time or, you know, some variant of that for those that are lactose intolerant. Um, you actually... I'm being a little bit facetious there, but let's have some fun. Hey, it's whatever it is you decide that you want to drink, you 
you make a decision, which is setting a goal, you go and get it because you believe you can do it. Because you've done it many times before and you know when you've achieved it because you've got your thirst quenched. Achieving any other goal is the same process. You decide what you want. You believe that you can do it. And whether you've done it or not doesn't matter. The belief is that you will keep trying until you learn what you need to learn to achieve it. And you're capable of learning anything. So you can then achieve that goal. And then you know you've achieved it because you've got it. And that's the process you really want to understand. And think about that. From my perspective, there's so many things that I've done in my life because I just said, I'm going to do it and I'm going to keep taking those steps. I saw myself as already having been that person. It wasn't a question. The times where I haven't achieved goals is because I didn't see myself as that. I just, you know, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't really see myself as having achieved that. Um, So I didn't even try in some circumstances. And that's where, you know, achieving that that goal go and get milk decide that's what you're going to do and that becomes your only option thank you for being part of the share.care community and helping people around the world prosper you're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share the more people contributing to the world being a better place the better the world becomes for others and for you